some benefits and drawbacks. Be sure to stay till the end of this video because I will be showing you how players have made billions of gold in Elder Scrolls Online. Really quick, if you enjoy learning and teaching people about Elder Scrolls Online, subscribe to the channel. And if this video helps you, give the video a like, so hopefully it can help someone else too. And if at any point in the video you want to jump ahead, I've put the timestamps down in the description for you. Now let's get into it. The first thing to understand when it comes to making gold in Imperial City is each method that I'm about to show you will work. However, how well they will work will depend on the amount of competition you have on your server. In order to find out which method will be the best for you, I recommend getting a few things. First, if you're playing on PC, download the Tamriel Trade Center add-on. This will provide you with updated pricing as well as show you what the items should be selling for on the Guild Traders. If you're unsure how to do this, check out this video on how to download add-ons. If you're playing on console, don't worry, I've taken care of you as well. Visit us.tamrieltradecenter.com and select the server and console that you're on. From there, you'll need to look up the items to see what they're going for on your server and console. I've put the link down in the description for you. The last thing I would recommend is getting into a good trading guild. This one is kind of a must, as you don't want to be that guy spamming in zone chat that you want to sell something, because no one likes that guy. Just get a trading guild. Don't be that guy. I would recommend finding a trading guild in a major city, such as Grotwood, Wayrest, or Rawcall. The main thing to look for in a trading guild is how consistently they keep their selling location, as other guilds will bid on that location every week. If you're unsure how to join a trading guild, this video will walk you through the ins and outs of joining a trading guild using the Guild Finder. When it comes to making gold, there's a few things that we can do to increase the amount of gold we get, such as putting 50 points in Gilded Fingers, and another 50 points in Fortune's Favor. This will increase the amount of gold you find as we are going through each method. Once we have optimized the amount of gold we receive, it's time to travel to Imperial City. If you don't currently have the DLC, go into the Crown Store and under the DLC tab, get the Imperial City DLC. This is free, so don't worry about spending crowns or money, just go into the Crown Store and get the DLC. After you download that and reset your game, go into your Alliance War menu by hitting L on your keyboard or navigating the menus on console. Once you get to the menu, join the Imperial City campaign that's best for you. Once we get into Imperial City, you will be introduced to a new currency called Telvar. Telvar is like gold in the fact that you can use Telvar to purchase items. Once you have the items, you will list them on the guild trader for gold. Notice at the bottom corner of your screen, there's a Telvar multiplier. This will show you how much Telvar you have on your character while in Imperial City. As you get more Telvar, you will increase your multiplier, which will increase the amount of Telvar you receive. With zero Telvar on your character, you will be at a times one multiplier. Once you get at least 100 Telvar, you will hit a times two multiplier, which will double the amount of Telvar that you get. At 1000 Telvar, you'll hit a times three, and at 10,000, you'll hit times four. Now, at times four, you no longer receive any benefit for having more Telvar on you, so it's important to manage the amount of Telvar that you have at any given time. Now, while it is beneficial to have as much Telvar on you as possible, it is important to know that if you die, you will lose half of the Telvar that you're carrying. Meaning that if you are at 10,000 Telvar and you die, you will lose 5,000 of that Telvar. So this comes down to the more confident you are in your ability to stay alive, the more Telvar you're able to confidently carry. Now, if you're wondering, well, where does the Telvar go when I die? Well, the answer is to the person or thing that killed you. So let's flip the script. Say you are running around with Imperial City with your buddies and you dominate a group of enemies. They will lose half of the Telvar that they were carrying and that Telvar is then divided among you and your group. Also, if you're looking for a group to run with, feel free to join the Discord as we're always looking for awesome people to play with. The link is in the description. 
Now, I think it's worth mentioning that during the Imperial City DLC event, you are able to get increased Telvar. However, because of this, Imperial City sees a large increase in players, which makes getting Telvar a little harder. Anyway, back to the analogy. As you and your buddies are running around IC, another way to increase the Telvar that you get is by capturing the district flags. Each flag you hold increases the amount of Telvar your alliance receives by 33%, up to 198%. So, by making sure that your alliance possesses all the flags, you are making sure that you are making as much Telvar as possible. Please note that by capturing the flags, you're only providing a bonus if you're in the Imperial City districts. If you're in the sewers, the bonus is not going to be provided. Now that we've optimized the amount of Telvar that we're able to get, it's time to make some Telvar. The first and least risky way of making Telvar is by running loops in the Imperial City sewers. This can be a decent way to make Telvar as you can continuously run from ad group to ad group and not many people venture down there. I have marked the loops that I had the highest gold gains when I've tested. As you're running through the sewers, you'll come across open Daytrick portals. By closing these portals, you will be provided a chest that contains Telvar and other various items, which you can sell for extra gold. While you're in the sewers, you may run into the occasional roaming banner boss. These spawn on all of the marked loops, and by beating these banner bosses, you will receive a boost of Telvar. However, they can be quite difficult, so if you're not able to beat them, make sure you're running ahead of them so that you're not being slowed down. The next way to receive Telvar is through questing and doing dailies in Imperial City. Although it does not provide a high amount of Telvar, it is easy to do and you can do it daily so it makes it easy to repeat. Keep in mind, if you are going to do these quests, the other Alliance players can be bloodthirsty, so be ready for a fight. The last and best way to get Telvar in Imperial City is by taking out the roaming bosses in each district. These bosses can be difficult to solo, however, if you're able to, they will provide a large boost in Telvar. With all of the districts captured and a times 4 multiplier, I average 14,000 Telvar per boss. This adds up rather quickly, so it's important to stay on top of the amount of Telvar you are getting, as you'll still lose half of your Telvar if you die. A quick bonus tip, when you have a lot of Telvar, the best way to get out of Imperial City is by queuing for Cyrodiil. This will take you right out of IC and will put you in Cyrodiil. This is great if you're being chased and you need to get away quickly. Now that we have Telvar, it's time to turn that Telvar into gold. A quick disclaimer, prices can fluctuate depending on your server or console due to supply and demand. So use the tips and tricks I'm giving you as a guide and look at the market to know which method is best for you. Once you have your Telvar, travel back to your Alliance base and find the area where the Telvar merchants hang out. Typically, this will be the farthest end of your Alliance base. The first way of turning your Telvar into gold is by buying and selling Imperial City gear sets. For this method, find the first and second Telvar armorers. Once there, scroll through the merchant's menu and identify which sets sell well and which do not. If you downloaded the add-on we talked about earlier, you'll be able to see the going rates as well as the number of items on the market. A quick note, if there's only one item on the market of a gear set piece, that may be an indication that that set does not sell well. However, if there are quite a few pieces on the market, it may indicate that there is a steady demand for that set and it's worth investing in. From there, buy the pieces and list them on the trader for the suggested price, or what you think you can sell them for. As we start out, I would recommend going by the TTC suggested price until you understand what you can and cannot sell them for. With this method, I was seeing roughly a 17 to 1 gold to Telvar ratio. Now with patches and changes to ESO, the meta sets are always changing, so it's important to keep up to date with channels like mine to see what the meta sets are and what's going to sell well. So hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already. A few things to mention. When you're finding sets that sell well, keep in mind that weapons typically sell better than body pieces in some cases. So if you get a Destro staff, daggers, mauls, or swords, 
Typically, they will sell faster and for more than body set pieces. Now that we've covered armor and weapons, the next method is selling jewelry. To do this, find the gold jewelry merchant next to the armor vendors. This merchant sells gold jewelry pieces for all of the same sets that the other merchants did. This is a good way to sell gold items on the trader. However, when I tested this, I found a ratio of 16.5 to 1 gold to Telvar. Another downside is you'll need to save up at least 100,000 Telvar before you're able to buy one jewelry piece. Then you'll need to sit on that item until someone buys it, which means you'll tie up all of your Telvar and your gold in one item, which is not a smart investment. So while I don't think you should sell gold jewelry, it is another method of turning Telvar into gold. Now that we've covered selling gear and set pieces, the next method of making gold is by buying items from the Telvar general merchant. The general merchant in IC sells crafting materials, rune boxes, style pages, and XP scrolls. This can be a very profitable way of turning Telvar into gold. The first few items that the general merchant carries are crafting materials. These you can use to make high level armor and potions. However, due to the saturation of the market, some crafting materials may not be the best and the gold return is very low. The first item I would recommend buying are alchemy parcels. You can buy an alchemy parcel for 500 Telvar, and these contain 18 various alchemy reagents. After opening a large number of these alchemy parcels, I found I got an average of 9,000 gold per parcel, with some parcels being worth around 6,500 gold and others being just shy of 14,000 gold. This provided an 18 to 1 gold to Telvar ratio, which so far has been the highest Telvar to gold ratio out of all of the other methods. A quick bonus tip, when you're opening alchemy parcels, add them to your quick slot. This will make opening them super quick. The next crafting material I would recommend are Hykejos. Hykejos are glyphs that end game players use to enchant their gear. You can purchase Hykejos for 5,000 Telvar and they typically sell for 50 to 60,000 gold on the traders. This provides a 12 to 1 gold to Telvar ratio, which is not the best, however, the lower Telvar cost, plus the rate in which they sell, makes them prime for making quick gold. I did find that if you were to take a Hykejo and combine it with a Rapora and a Kuda to craft a truly superb glyph of prismatic defense, the glyphs typically sold for around 80,000 gold, which increases our ratio to 15 to 1 gold to Telvar. A few other ways of turning your Telvar into gold is by selling the Rune Box Polymorphs and the PvP XP Scrolls that you can buy from the Telvar General Merchant. The General Merchant sells three Polymorphs, the Zifkin Agar, Zifkin Dreadguard, and the Zifkin Tormentor. Each of these sell very well as they're cosmetic pieces that change the appearance of your character. These cost 250,000 Telvar and sell for around 4 million gold apiece, which is a 16 to 1 gold to Telvar ratio. Although it is still a great way to get gold, the downside is the high cost for each polymorph and tying up the Telvar while you wait for it to sell. The last item I would recommend is the Chief Aquartarius Torte Dissertation. Nailed it. This is an upgrade item that takes a 50% AP scroll and turns it into a 100% AP scroll, for PvP. You can buy these for 500,000 Telvar and they sell for around 8 million gold, which provides a 16.5 to 1 gold to Telvar ratio. Much like the polymorphs and the gold jewelry, they require a large upfront Telvar purchase. Then, once you do purchase it, everything will be tied up waiting for it to sell. The last method, and my personal favorite, as you're running around Imperial City collecting Telvar, you will start to collect key fragments from ads and bosses. Using the key fragments, you can open up various vaults around Imperial City. In these vaults, you will open up a chest and collect either the willpower, endurance, or agility set items. The jewelry and weapons of these sets do sell well. However, if you do not want to take the time to open the vaults, I would recommend listing the key fragments on the market as each key fragment sells between 500 to 600 gold a piece. A quick bonus tip, if you do decide to open up the vaults and get the set pieces, be sure to loot all of the barrels, 
crates, and urns as they can contain various items like recipes, ingredients, and motifs. I really hope that this video gave you some ideas when it comes to making gold in Imperial City. If it did, give the video a like and if you'd like to see more tips and tricks like this for ESO, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to hang out, catch my live streams every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4pm Mountain. And until next time, happy farming.